This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and rejoice in it and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare yourself to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned through my thoughts and my words, what I've done, what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those who are born in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Read it from the Acts of the Apostles. As a crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man who you see and know, his name has made, has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all you. 
Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophet from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will be, will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen, and all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant, sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, O God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. O Lord, O God, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him? Or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord our God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with the glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, even the beasts of the field, birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and, one, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Read it from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way, how they'd come to recognize him in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do you question? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. 
and you open their minds to understand the scriptures, he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem your witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the opening prayer, in the first reading in the Gospel, you see a common thread. And it mentions the name, the name of Jesus. We prayed, O God, who have united the many witnesses in confessing your name. First reading is a prolongation of the reading yesterday in which Peter and John encounter the crippled man at the beautiful gate. And they look at him and say, look, silver and gold we have none. But in the name, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Not only did he walk, but he got up, walked, he was jumping and leaping and praising God. It's a joyful, almost comical passage where you see this man who never walked before. And not only is he walking, but he's jumping and leaping and praising God, no? It's a real miracle because the guy, usually someone has to learn how to walk. Right away he was walking, but not only that he was jumping, not only that he was leaping, no? so it's going from better to better, huh? That came about by the name of Jesus. Not even the physical presence, but the name of Jesus, because Peter and John had so much faith and trust, not only in the risen Lord, but even in his name was enough to make this man walk and leap and praise God. Years ago, I had an experience related to that first reading. I, I, I would walk to, uh, when I was a seminarian, I would help the missionaries of charity. And I would walk about a mile and a half with one of my friends, another seminarian, and we would serve the poor, and then we would um, come back to our residence. On the way back, there was this uh, crippled man apparently crippled man that had his hand extended. He looked somewhat withered and he was walking with a limp. And he asked me and Anton for silver and gold. Being a seminarian with a vow of poverty, I had neither silver nor gold. So the man approached me and I said, in Italian, mi dispiace, non ce l'ho. Okay, and he insisted again. I said, mi dispiace, non ce l'ho, signore. And he kept insisting. I said, mi dispiace, non ce l'ho. If you don't know Italian, mi dispiace, non ce l'ho, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't have it. So I walked about, let's say about, 15 steps, and I turned around, and the man that was crippled was standing up straight doing this to me. He was cursing me out. When I returned to the house, I told some of the other seminarians. And one of them, Vincenzo Voce, said, you should have said this, silver and gold I have none, but in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. <laughs> So 
So every time I read this, I call to mind that, that incident in my life, no? So we have, it, we have the name of Jesus mentioned in the first reading. In the gospel, what do we read? He says, thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. So I see a common thread in the opening prayer, in the first reading, in the gospel. And it's the name of Jesus. Years ago, when we were taught by the nuns, and our good parents 50 years ago, they would teach us, every time you hear the name of Jesus, you should bow your head. Now there are cultural differences. I deal a lot with the Hispanics, and they actually named their, they named their son Jesus. And they've said that this is unthinkable in the Anglo culture. You never think about naming me that. It's very interesting, isn't it? Cultural difference. No? So at the name of, at the name of Jesus. We bow our heads. Now, even in the Mass, the rubrics, which means the liturgical prescriptions or laws, says when we say the name Jesus, Mary and the saint of the day, we also should be making a simple bow. A simple bow would be this, not, not, not like that. That would be a profound bow, okay? It's a powerful name. It's a powerful name. St. Paul, in his letter to the Filipinos, I mean, the, to the Philippians, no? the canonic hymn, as the theologians say, at the name of Jesus, every knee, in heaven, on earth, and below the earth should bow. So when the name of Jesus is said, they're bowing in heaven bending their knee. We're bending our knee and our brow every time we hear. Even the souls in hell are obliged to, to bend their knee at the name of Jesus Christ, not to mention the souls in purgatory. It's a powerful name. See, we see in the Acts of the Apostles that miracles are cured by the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who was the one that really promoted this devotion? It was St. Bernardine of Siena, was the saint that really promoted this. And recently there was a liturgical feast day in the name of the Holy, in honor of the Holy Name of Jesus, which is in the first week of the year, it's in January. Next time that you participate in an exorcism, if you have that privilege, no? Or you're involved in that ministry, <laughs> you're gonna, you'll be aware that the exorcist, read the writings of Gabriel de Morth, okay, the exorcist. He will expel the devil or the devils, starting off with the name of Jesus, and then Mary, and St. Joseph, the terror of demons, and St. Michael, the archangel, and St. Benedict, the name of Jesus. How did St. Joan of Arc conquer the English? Through the names of Jesus and Mary inscribed on her breastplate. Powerful names. So getting down to brass tacks, the two standards of St. Ignatius. We'll be talking about that in our 
Ignatian form eventually will arrive at that. We are tempted. The devil wants to knock us down. When we're tempted, we should call upon three names. The names of Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph. We should get the name of, in, in the habit of offering reparation for those who curse the name of Christ. There's a lot of that. Did you ever read the life of St. Dominic Savio? He's walking through the streets of Turin and a man cursed. He said, praise be the name of Jesus Christ. How did John Paul II address the people? Seal laudato Jesu Christo, which is may the name of Jesus be praised. So let's end our conversation today by praying together the divine praises. St. Ignatius says we're called to praise God, right? We're called to praise God. Let's praise the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the holy sacrament the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and his saints. So let us praise the name of Jesus in our life and for all eternity. Amen. We acclaim the love that saves us. We respond, we praise you, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, word of God, you took on our humanity that you might raise us to share in your divinity. We praise you, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you bore hunger, thirst, and weariness that you might grant rest to our souls. We praise you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who accepted the mockery and derision that you might restore lost humanity to dignity. We praise you, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you received bitter wounds that you might make us whole. We praise you, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you revealed to your disciples the mystery of your humanity risen and glorified. Grant us the eyes of faith to see your presence in all those who are your body 
you who live and reign with God, the Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through the goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death. By rising he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he's betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who will please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Rule him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, to await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you'd enter my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia. Right now we're going to expose the Blessed Sacrament, which is our Lord, our God, our Savior, our best friend, Jesus Christ, and invite all of you to make your spiritual communion if you have not already made it, and enter into a really deep personal dialogue with Christ, who is your best friend. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. <coughs>
<clears throat> Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Regina Chile, Laetate, Alleluia, we are Meruisti Portare, Alleluia, Ezer Exit, Sigutixi, Alleluia, Ora Pro Nobis Deum, Alleluia.